much bigger than I thought it was going to be, but I figured since everyone just came back from lunch, I would give you some sugar. So you can leave and then not be like, oh man, I was asleep, I don't know what she said. So hopefully I won't bore you. So pass these around and you know maybe the person chewing the blow pop next to you will keep you awake. <laughs> All right, so this is SEO, word, or SEO myths and WordPress magic. Couple of things you should know. My name is Casey Gillette. I am the online marketing manager at grasshopper.com. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what grasshopper.com is, we are a virtual phone system. That's not exciting. But we do a lot of cool things, which is. So I guess I have that going, right? Now, my Twitter handle is at KCG. If you want to tweet at me, great. Just keep it nice, OK? I don't want my feelings getting hurt. The last thing is, and I don't want you guys to get up and leave when I tell you this, but there isn't actually any magic. Sorry. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. So if there's not magic, what is there? Well. When it comes to SEO, we hear all these things, right? I mean, it's really become a big enough thing that, I mean, even when I tell my friends what I do now, they sort of understand. Whereas before, my mom thought I worked with, at Google. So that's good. But the first thing you hear is, when it comes to SEO, all right, content, content, content. And you need to build links. And that's it. There you go. You're done. You're set. That's not really true, right? Like, yes, it is. But there are these other things that you need to take into consideration. So I like to call it go-off paging. Your site architecture and the way your site is built can actually help your SEO uh, rankings and, and it can help impact your site. Um, there's really a few main things that you need to know. Um, and that's my cat picture. I figured I had to get one in. Everyone likes that. So the first thing is URL structure. And the nice thing about most CMS systems these days is they make it easy for your URL not to look like crap. So I don't know if you guys remember, but you know, five years ago, even three years ago, you'd go to Amazon and they had these wonderful URLs that, you know, 20 lines long, had a lot of question marks and letters and numbers. How the hell are you supposed to remember that? You try to send it and it just didn't work. The great thing about most CMSs, and including WordPress, is that you can customize your URL. So, what, you know, we hear, we talk about keywords. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. You need to pick your keywords. Put your keywords in a URL. Um, it helps customers remember. It helps search engines know what they're about to hit. And it's basically just a good practice. Redirects. Um, redirects, we all have to do it, right? It's kind of a sucky thing, but sometimes it just happens. There are ways you can do it, and it can be positive. So there's a couple different kinds. The best one is a 301 redirect. And the reason it's the best one is because when the search engine spider hits that, they know that your page is gone, right? It's not there anymore. It's at this new page. Go to this new page, love it, index it. Tell all your friends about it. Now, if you have a 302, they hit it. Like, okay, it's kind of temporary, so maybe we'll come back in a little bit. So all the links that you had to that page are just kind of hanging out, and there's no page there. But if you use a 301 redirect, they hit it, they see all those links, and now they attribute it to the new page. So again, just kind of a best practice type thing. Um, and I don't know if people still do this, but it used to be don't use JavaScript redirects. Um, but if you're doing that, stop. Um, same thing with meta. I, I don't know if people do that still, but just, just don't do it. Um, third thing, robots. Um, is everyone familiar with a robots file? Okay. So a robots file is just a simple piece of text. It's a text file that you put on your site, and as soon as a search engine spider hits your site, they're looking for that. It's usually, it should be on your root server. It's typically domain slash robots.txt. And if you Google it, it's really simple. You just copy it, upload it, that's it. Um, but it's great because let's say you have some pages that you don't want the search engines to find. Um, you know, we do, at Grasshopper, we do a lot of testing. Um, we have a lot of pages that we don't use anymore. Some of those pages are still there, and we want them, but we don't want the search engines to find them and index them because we don't want customers to find them. So you simply go into your robots file, and you disallow a folder. 
Really simple, really easy to do. Um, and even if you don't want to disallow anything, just go in and put it there because they're still going to come looking for it. Um, so yeah, if you just Google robot, robots, um, you should find it. Pretty simple. Uh, the fourth thing is your error setup. So when you go to a site, hit it, hit a page, and you get this lovely 500 error telling you there's a server error. You get a 403 error telling you it's forbidden. Do you want to stay on that site? Do you want to buy something from that person? Probably not. Because if they can't figure out how to manage their site, can they really help you manage your business or sell you something? So just kind of a, a note to keep in mind is, really simple thing to do, just set your, you can set it as a 404. Um, and it doesn't have to be clever. Kind of a best practice type thing is, put a page there that says, sorry, what, you, what you're looking for is no longer here, but here's a couple things you might like. A lot of people have gotten really clever with theirs, um, including this. This little kitty's saying, sorry, I tried to find it, but you're gonna have to leave. Um, I highly recommend that you go online and search for um, funny 404 error pages because there are truly some really great ones out there. Um, I was looking earlier and there's one of Homer Simpson and a Moo Moo saying dough. thought that was pretty funny. Um, ours at Grasshopper, we also use a kitty because who doesn't like kitties? Everyone likes that and you don't feel bad once you see it. The last thing is an XML sitemap. An XML sitemap is a sitemap created specifically for the search engines. Now, there's some debate going on now about whether you need it or not. At this point, the search engines are quick enough that they're indexing sites fast. They really don't need you to tell them where pages are. But the nice thing about having an XML sitemap is when you put it into Webmaster Tools, it gives you all this great information. So you have this sitemap, it tells search engines all the pages on your site, it tells you how frequently they change, and then you can go in and it'll give you stats on it. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. <laughs> all right, enjoy that for a minute, guys. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. Okay, so where was I? It goes in and can tell you all these awesome stats. Here they are. So what kind of things will it tell you? It'll tell you if there's any errors. It'll tell you what they can't reach. It'll give you the option for site links. So when someone searches for your business, you get those nice little site links. You can set your URL. Um, and kind of this new thing is this URL parameters. Um, if you're using different tracking codes, you can go in and define those. But it'll also tell you what people are searching to get to your site, links to your site, keywords they associate with your site. Um, so just, just a lot of really great stuff. And if you ask me, that's really the main benefit of that XML sitemap. It's less so helping them get through your site and more so give me back some information, right? They never want to give us anything. Well, now they are, so take advantage of it. So, what are some tools you can use to help improve your off-page, help improve the off-page elements? So the first tool is this all-in-one SEO pack. By far, my favorite WordPress plugin of all time. It lets you create your own title tags. Um, it lets you create meta descriptions. It prevents duplicate content. Um, you can put your keyword tag, you can put keywords in there, but I mean, I don't think anyone cares about keywords anymore, so you don't have to waste your time. Um, it's just a really awesome plugin. Um, the sec second thing is, there's a few different uh, XML sitemap generators, and they'll actually, it'll just do it for you. It'll update for you. I don't have a preference. Um, there's probably three or four that are actually really good. Permalink settings. So when we're talking about our URL structure, I'm sure you're all familiar. When you install WordPress, you have the option, how do you want your URL to be presented? You can use the date. Um, I think it still offers just kind of the crappy URLs. Um, but you can go in and customize it how you want. If you just want it to be like the page title, uh, the blog title, whatever. That's usually what I recommend. Um, there's nothing nicer than just a pretty URL. You can just share with your friends. That last thing on there, 
And if you take away anything from this slide right here, the most simple, I want to say outdated, but it's not because it's awesome. Xenu is a tool that you put your URL in, it will give you all the errors, all the 404 errors on your site. It'll tell you what's redirecting. It'll give you any broken links. It's truly awesome. And it's been around forever. Um, like, I literally used it at my first job. And a lot of the things that I did then no longer apply. Um, so it's just cool. So if you take anything away, just put your site through that. And it, it can give you some good insight. So myth number two, site speed matters. If I would have given this presentation, I don't know, a year ago, I might have said this is not true, that this is false, but it's true. How fast your site is, is really impacting how your site performs in the search engines. Take a second, read this. What it's saying to you, Google is coming out and saying to you how fast your site performs is how it performs in the search results. Again, they don't always give us a ton of information, so if they're giving it to you, it definitely matters. They also put it in, I'm sorry, they also put it in Google Analytics. So if you go into Google Analytics, it'll tell you your average speed per page. It's in Webmaster Tools. They have a tool called Page Speed, right? I mean, it can't get any more obvious. Um, Check it out, page, I think it's pagespeed.googlelabs, although labs isn't going to be there. So just Google PageSpeed tool. Uh, there's also a uh, Chrome and Firefox plugin, I believe, that'll tell you how fast your site performs. The nice thing is that I know all this stuff, and yet when I log into Webmaster Tools, it tells me, your site performs slower than 75% of sites on the internet. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think it's also worth noting that there's been a lot of studies out about this lately. 80% of people will leave your site if it takes longer than four seconds to load. Four seconds, that's not a long time. Remember the days when it was eight? Oh man, I got eight seconds. No, you have four, four seconds. So there are a few things that you, know, you can do to speed up your site. As I put here, Google, Google, Google. It's giving you the info. Um, like I said, page speed tool. Um, analytics and webmaster tools. I think it's webmaster tools. Both PageSpeed and webmaster tools will tell you here's what you can do. So they'll actually give you tips. Um, you know, compress your images. Um, you know, put some JavaScript off site. Move your CSS. It'll tell you those type of things. Second thing, WordPress Super Cache. Um, this is a really nice plugin. Basically, what happens is it limits the number of database calls so that if you have people coming to your site, it's not continuously hitting the database, slowing it down. It caches the page so that the next person who comes is not waiting for it, it's already there. Um, if you're expecting a lot of traffic or even if, even if you just want your site to be faster. Third one, Smush It. This is an image compression plugin. Um, images can take up a lot of, they can take a lot of time. And, and they can take, they're just, they're just big, right? Like, they're just big. A lot of people actually host them off-site so that it's not calling your own database. This is great, because it'll compress it for you. That last thing, get rid of your inactive plugins. Maybe you put some in there and now you don't like them. Maybe they're no longer updated. Just get them out of there. You won't even miss them, trust me. Okay, myth number three. Don't link out, right? We talk a lot about links. How do I get links? How can I buy links? What can I do? Oh, no, no, I don't want to give anyone else links. This is not true, right? You're not going to lose your link juice by linking out. One thing that I think people don't think about when it comes to linking is that typically it's for a reason, right? If someone's linking to you, it's for a reason. We have those same reasons, right? I mean, there's sites on the internet that I like. There's sites on the internet that my visitors could benefit from. So think about it more in terms of that. I want to give you guys an example here um, of helping your visitors. So on our site, we have this section called Happy Customers, okay? 
this is kind of a new thing and, and there was a lot of debate about, ah, I mean, do we really want to move people away? But we now have this list of customers who we're presenting to our hundreds of thousands of visitors. Our customers love us for that, because why wouldn't they? And then we're also helping people who come to our site. Some of these are really great tools for entrepreneurs and small businesses. So now we're saying, oh hey, maybe you need this, go check it out. That link out isn't hurting us. Now, we also have it open in a new window, so they don't actually leave our site. So like I said, you won't lose link juice, and you might actually make some friends. So off of that example I just told you, this is one of the companies that we have on our page. They wrote this great article about us, right? Multiple links, they used some of our keywords, awesome. All simply because we put it on there, right? So it's another way to, to get links back to your site as well. If you really are concerned and you're really like, oh man, I don't want to share my link juice, no follow the link. Um, basically, that just means the search engines won't, won't follow it. They won't leave your site. Um, you're supposed to do this with paid links, uh, you're, or you're supposed to say, hey, paid for this link. If someone's paying me, don't follow it. It's up to you. Um, we don't usually use, we don't use them too much. But so that being said, it's great to be a giver. You can be a little selfish sometimes, and you should be. So I basically use that other slide just so I could talk about this. Links throughout your site are very important for your users, for the search engine spiders. Helping people navigate your site, is, it's just, it's so important. The nice thing is that when it's your site, you get to dictate what those links say and where they go to. Use your keywords. Work Bar Boston, is anyone familiar with this? Yeah, they're really awesome. Um, basically, it's a co-working space downtown. You go in. Their main keywords are around co-working, workspace. Look at this link. Workspace pictures. What do you guys think you're going to see on the next page? Workspace pictures. When you're using crosslinks throughout your site, tell people what they're about to hit, right? OK, I know what I'm, I'm going to find. You know who else knows what they're going to find? Google. So tools to use. Uh, I noticed that Zamanta is a sponsor. And that's not why they're on here. They're on here because they are freaking awesome. Um, if you haven't used this, go get it, especially if you blog. It's so awesome. Basically, you, it's, a, it's a browser add-on. And you open up, you're writing, you have it in the sidebar, and it's giving you links. It's giving you relevant links, saying, hey, here's a New York Times article. Maybe you should link to it. Hey, here's an image that, that fits your blog post. Maybe you want to use it. Such a time saver, and it's just it's just awesome. Um, it really it really is awesome. So just just go check it out. The second one there, uh, SEO Smart Links Premium. I put premium on here. It's paid. There's also one that's not. This will take care of the cross-linking stuff I just told you about. Um, it'll just link them for you to where it finds relevant pages throughout your site, which is pretty cool. And the last one on there. Uh, Yarp, yet another related WordPress plugin. Um, it's, it's probably the best one out there. I think everyone's probably familiar with it. Um, one of the guys who's in charge of WordCamp Boston, Holla, he is the one who created this. It's, it's basically at the end of your post, it'll just automatically put in posts that are related. A great way to keep people on your site. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, what I do a lot of internet browsing during the day, a lot of reading blog posts. What do you do when you find a blog post when you're done? You leave, on to the next one. This is a great way to keep people on your site and a great way to get links throughout your site. So, my spiel on that. The last one, um, social does not equate to rankings. And again, um, 
I, I, my opinion has certainly shifted on this. Because if you've paid attention to any news in the past three weeks, you would have seen this gigantic announcement. Google Plus, how many of you were vying for invites? Hey, give me an invite, please, anyone? Yeah, people were passing them out like they were drugs. Hey man, I got an invite, you want it? I think I saw one on eBay for like a thousand bucks. So what does this mean? Do you guys really think that Google's interested in giving us a social network? Hey guys, play around, it's cool. No. They want to know what we do. They want to know what you do with your friends, what you do with your family, the things you share. This is basically just a way to gather this information. If you've noticed, they haven't called it a product. It's a project. It's a project for you to give them all your glorious information. Uh, the same thing can be said with Google Plus One. You guys are, see are seeing this on the results now, right? Um, and to make things even better, it's here, right? They're putting it right here. How many people are plus one in your site? How many people are plus one in your PPC ads, right? Probably matters. Um, I mean, I <laughs> it, it, if you think it doesn't, that's, it does. So what about us? Right, so Google's coming out with their social network, it's awesome, everyone wants in. Okay, they kicked out Twitter, we're not using Twitter and our real-time results anymore. But what about us? If you're Facebook and Twitter, hey, you're not gonna include us anymore? No. Look at this number right here. This is the links to our site. Facebook is the number two provider of inbound links. That's huge. And they're counting those, right? So they're actually telling me that Facebook brings in that many links. Same with YouTube, same with Twitter. And if you go down the list, there's a lot of other social networks on there as well. So while maybe they're not impacting the exact placement of where you fall in the search result, those links matter. And that's gonna help. That's gonna help you. So I know that there was just a good, uh, I'm sorry, session on social plugins. So I'm not gonna get too into it. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of plugins. Um, I think she had mentioned, mentioned Socialize, which is pretty awesome. I put ShareBar on there. It's also pretty cool. There's just a lot. Find what works for you. A lot of it basically comes down to how you want it to look, right? Um, and everyone's different. Everyone's different. Second thing there, Google Analytics for WordPress. It's okay, I don't love it, but it is a really cool way to when you're just in your dashboard to see some analytics and stats on your posts. Um, just kind of give you a good idea what's working, what's not, how much traffic is getting. Maybe you can replicate that in the future. Um, of course, you know, you have to have a regular analytics account, which is worth noting that they recently added social engagement within Google Analytics. Again, can't get any more obvious, right? <laughs> so it's in there, it's telling you people who are sharing, people who are engaging, take advantage of it. Um, that's all I can tell you, take advantage of it. And then that last thing, again, not a WordPress plugin. Um, it's just a really cool thing that Bitly launched like, a couple months ago. And you can create your own custom URLs, your own short URLs. Um, and it's just a nice way, like I said, no one wants these crappy URLs. You can just go in, put your branding on it. This is ours. So, you know, it's short, to the point. And that's it. That went a lot faster than I thought. So we have about, I don't know, 10 minutes for questions? 15 minutes for questions? Who has questions? <laughs> uh, I think someone's actually gonna come help you guys. Did I hear you say that um, no one cares about keywords anymore? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember those awesome, that time when you would just put 500 keywords in your meta tag? Don't do that. <laughs> it, it's, it's really, at this point, I mean, all the search engines have come out and said, like, 
they just don't matter, right? It's really more for an internal purpose. Don't waste your time trying to spam the keyword tags. Just don't. Just, just don't. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, do you think uh, Google, if you have a plus one on your website, they might be favoring your website over somebody else in a search result? And, yeah. and if so, when I, should you embed the code in or should you use a plugin? At this point, I certainly don't think they're favoring it. Um, I think they're trying to figure out if it's going to matter. But it can't hurt to try, right? I mean, that metric is in there. I mean, they're giving it to you. It, it, I just don't think that it can hurt. And I would probably embed it. They put that out there. There was a big, big complaint when it first came out that you couldn't embed it onto your site. Now you can. Um, might be easier. But if you're going to put it with all your other, you can include it with all your other share buttons. So. Uh, Any negatives to the Supercash plugin? Not that I know of. Um, we had a heck of a time getting it on our site just because of the way we deploy things. But I was at a session here last year, and uh, it was on like speeding up your WordPress site. Awesome. Yeah, I saw that one too. I'm sorry? Yeah, he said that W3 Supercash is infinitely better. Um, right here. We want everyone to hear you. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> um, there, there was a person in the back who just commented embed versus plugin. Can you comment on what that is about? Um, I'm assuming that it's about when you're sharing. I mean, is, is it, was that anyone here? <laughs> is that you? Uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so if you want to use a plugin or if you want to actually embed the code onto your page. The one difference is that if you are going to implement it with Google Analytics social sharing, you have to embed it. They give you a code. Um, it, it, it just really depends. I mean, some of the tools will give you really great stats. Um, it, it's really just a preference, right? Like a plugin is just so easy. Um, I mean, we use a plugin, so. Okay, so for a lot of those plugins, I mean, I'm sure you can in hard code things or use plugins. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a conversation you're having all the time when you're designing your web pages? Should we hard code this or do a plugin? Not yeah. really. No. Not really. Um, no difference in SEO or something. Yeah. Like that. No, I don't think. I mean, not that I know of. I mean, it doesn't mean it's true. Not true. But I've never seen anything that would tell me otherwise. One more thing. Sure. Uh, the the Grasshopper site. That yep. is that all designed in WordPress or? The main site is in EE, Expression Engine. The blog is in WordPress, and it's awesome. They just redid it, so nice. Hi, first I want to thank you. It's awesome information here. Could you explain a little bit about what this plus one is? I'm not familiar with it. And maybe yeah. perhaps some so other people me, in the audience. I can actually show you. That may make it a little easier, right? So let's search WordPress. Get out of here. <laughs> not on Bing. <laughs> I do use the internet, I swear. Why would it show it to me? Just kidding, it doesn't exist. Someone give me a good term. Insurance, all right. <laughs> all right, well, we'll do this. <laughs> Basically what it is, is it's something that shows up next to the search results. And lets you plus what you like. Is this the reason this is happening? Firefox wasn't working, they told me. So it's this project that you can plus one sites that you like. Right? So when you're signed in, you plus one a site, it knows that you like it, um, and it really just goes towards that personal, personalization of search results that we talked about before. Um, 
and it's helping them dictate what you like and what you don't. There we go. Someone's a genius out there. See this? Right here? That's what it is. So that's, um, that's based on other sites that you have browsed to? Yeah. So it's letting you decide what you want to see and what you like. Um, there's also a kind of, a, it's not a debate, I guess, but a little bit of whether or not Google's actually showing you all that's out there, right? With all this personalization, are you missing a lot of things? Um, because it's giving you results now based on what it knows you like, um, your browsing history, these types of things, your social interactions. I've also seen this plus one in these paid ads where it's showing you how many people like that site. So under that paid ad, it says, you know, 10,000 likes. I mean, that can be awesome if a lot of people like you, or it can be killer if people don't. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But does that answer your question a little? Yes, I think it does. And yep. I also think they should include a don't like button. <laughs> Any day now. <laughs> Anyone else? Questions? I think he's going around. We'll get you next. No one's asleep yet? No? I guess you wouldn't answer if you were. <laughs> um, I, I think I have maybe a two-part question, but sure. um, it's about part subdomains and part um, uh, speeding up your website. Yep. So one of the ways we try and use um, to, to speed up our website is to use CDN, um, but that usually is on a subdomain, like so images or stuff loads mm -hmm. through CDN dot domain name. Yep. We also run into I also run into a lot of customers that you know say oh we want something dot our domain we want all these links coming in because that helps their SEO and I'm wondering between the two different scenarios you know, CDN loading images or something on your website or just having separate um, subdomains like you know customers dot grasshopper dot com instead right. of, you know they go to grasshopper dot com slash customers you know what does that do to your SEO is it is it good practice bad practice sure. Um, at this point, the search engines have got it pretty well figured out that it's the same site, right? So if you go into analytics or anything, it, it still qualifies that as your site. There is a big debate. I guess it's not that big, but it's a debate. Uh, if you should put your blog on a subdomain versus slash blog. My pre preference, and that's just personal preference, um, just from you know, doing it, is to not have it as a subdomain. But it's not going to hurt you. Um, is that the first part of your question? I, th I think so. So it doesn't really help or hurt you? Is that no. basically what you're saying? No. Questions? Questions? You again? <laughs> There's a guy back there. <laughs> I wonder what your thoughts are on uh, like custom landing pages. So if you, uh, you know, maybe it's a special search result and it takes you to a, a particular landing page that helps or hurts you. I am a huge advocate of landing pages. Um, they're very keyword focused. They are exactly what your customers are looking for and people love them and search results love them, right? We have, I, I really prefer them for paid search Right? They're really great for paid search. Um, you can optimize them how you want. They're really like conversion driven. But they're also great for organic and for SEO. Um, it's just a nice way to add content that's relevant. So in our case, like I said, we have this riveting product about 800 numbers and toll-free numbers and voicemail. We have pages about all that stuff. And they're very customized. So highly recommended. Thanks. What are your thoughts about uh, multiple sites that have similar, if not exact, same content with maybe a product name, the product name being different? Do you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, I would not do that. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and truth be told, it still works sometimes. <laughs> There's nothing more frustrating as an SEO, especially as an in-house SEO, or just any when you're going through the search results and you just see these, these duplicate sites, right? These people who basically have just launched a different URL with all the same content minus a few words. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but it does, it does work sometimes. <laughs> so. I think we have time for about one more. Uh, 
how an update to Hi, so in a practical application and taking all of what you were saying today, if I looked up, you know, in Google, my blog name, yep. what I see is the first search result is sort of the basic URL. Yep. And then maybe it'll be a post from like June and maybe another one from April. Yep. Even though I've had like a hundred posts in between June and April, I'm trying to figure out why it's only pulling these really random non-sequential posts and sort of figuring out is that normal am I supposed am I doing something wrong it, it could just be because maybe those posts got the most traffic they have the most links um, into them so those are the ones that they see as the most relevant some of the stuff right if you're just seeing the URL um, go in and add some tags to it that all-in-one SEO you can actually add like a title tag for your main site for your home page so that when someone hits that you have you know, this, this nice tag and this nice description telling people about what it is. Um, as for what they're indexing, yeah, it's typically just because what is the most popular and what has the most links into it. Okay, and what they're dictating is the most relevant. Um, in terms of getting the other stuff out there, again, it's just some of these like best practice type things. And uh, for you guys, I will, this will be on SlideShare, but one last slide is that there are some things if you're curious for more info, um, SEO Moz, Search Engine Land, Search Engine Guide, great, great sites. Everything from beginner to advanced. Couple articles on here. Um, again, I included two SEO Moz posts. That third one is, I mean, just go read it. It's basically telling you, they do these extensive studies every year, telling you what matters in ranking. It's great to have. Um, and then these two other posts just about website speed and plugins. Um, thank you guys so much. It was really great. Um, and if anyone has questions, uh, I will go to the back if you want to talk, or my email address or my Twitter handle. Please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I love talking about people, talking to people about SEO. I know it's really nerdy, but that's what it is. Thank you.